what I want to get onto now is the concept of voltage. So, um, voltage is a trickier concept, I think, than electric current. It's, I think, um, more difficult to get a picture in your head of what it actually is. Whereas, I think, electric current, it's, it's a bit easier to think of it as a flow rate, and it, it works quite nicely, this analogy of water, flow rate water. Um, I think, to start off, uh, introducing some of the different names that are used for voltage. So, electric current is basically just called electric current, but there's a whole load of different terms you might come across to describe voltage. Um, there's potential difference, electromotive force, bias, tension, electrical pressure. So these are all terms you might come across that mean voltage. And they, all of them actually give you some idea as to what voltage actually is. So um, we've got potential difference. So that's really useful because a, a nice way of thinking about voltage is as a potential of, of something to happen. And it's a difference, it has to be a difference between two points, so voltage only has meaning between two points. So um, it's kind of telling you there's this difference in this thing called potential between two, two different points. Um, then there's electromotive force. So it's also useful to think of, of voltage as being like a force that's pushing electrons around a circuit. Um, bias, which is, you know, if you like, favouring one point over another, there's some favouritism on one point or another that causes the flow of electrons. Um, there's tension as well, which again is like a bit like a sort of um, idea of pressure, and then electrical pressure again, going back to this idea of there being like this pressure pushing electrons around the circuit. Um, so I'm going to try and describe voltage in two different ways. So two, I'm going to use two different analogies to describe what voltage is. So first off, let's think about some charges. So some electrical charges. So um, we can think of this black ball as being like, for example, a positive charge, and this white ball as being like a negative charge, right? and they, they're going to attract each other. So I'm going to represent the forces between them with this spring, so this is like the force that, that's pulling them together, and you know, this, this spring is fully contracted, so let's just imagine now that, that this position is these two charges getting as close as they can to each other. Right, so these two charges are as close as they can to each other, they can't get any closer. So the, the charges are in some kind of, they're in some equilibrium now. We, we can't get any energy out of them, right, they've got as close as they're gonna get to each other. But what we can do is we can put some energy in and separate them. So we put some energy in and you have to put exert force to, to push them apart and exerting a force over some particular distance that takes energy right? and the, the more the more distance that you put in to separate them the more energy you have to put in so so let's imagine we've now put in some energy to separate these charges so these now have some potential energy right some energy can be released so there's, there's some way when we release this, this, this charge moving towards this one, that, that some energy can then be dissipated. But it's slightly, the concept is slightly different to potential energy, um, exactly, because we could have any number of charges and pull them a certain distance apart. And the, the idea of electrical potential is it's 
it's like the distance that you've pulled these charges apart, whereas the potential energy is you know, the, the, the sum of the, the product of the distance that you pulled it and the amount of charge that you've then pulled, because that's the total energy that you've got. So we want to know like the, the energy that can be released per unit charge. So that's like the distance that we've pulled the charges apart with. The energy that we've had to put in to separate the charges, which is the energy that can be released per unit charge as we allow them to come back together. So that's really telling us what voltage is. It's energy per unit charge. So in something like a battery, we're not physically pushing charges apart, but the equivalent is done chemically. So in a battery, there's some chemical potential that is doing the equivalent of pulling these charges apart and giving a certain amount of energy that can be released per unit charge. So the strict definition of voltage is the work done or the, the energy that can be released to move a unit of charge from point A to point B. So that's kind of like that analogy I was showing with the, the two charges and pulling them apart to separate them. You have to put some energy in and... What would be the representative of electrons and cross? Um, this is this is just an example um, to demonstrate it. So we can just imagine a positive charge and a negative charge. It can be whatever you want it to be. So yeah, a proton could be a positive charge. So we define it as the amount of energy that we get from moving a charge from point A to point B, and it's, it's only got meaning between two points. So if we come back to this analogy of the charges, where we put some energy in to separate them, the energy that we get out only has meaning if we say, you know, how much energy is given from moving the charge from this position to this position, for example. So we have to define the two points between which we're doing the measurement. So it's got units of volts, which breaks down into more fundamental units of joules per coulomb. So one volt is one joule per coulomb. So that means each coulomb of charge can dissipate one joule of energy, one joule per coulomb. And another nice analogy for voltage is to think of it as the water pressure. So again, if we've got a water circuit that we're using to make an analogy for an electrical circuit, then it's really useful to think of the voltage as being like the pressure in that water circuit. Um, we can think of it like uh, as a head of water. So if you um, fill up some sort of vertical container, then the, the higher you fill it, then the more pressure you get out of here. You can just think of that distance as being like a voltage. It's the same thing of thinking it as like pressure. Um, and really, these these are the two the, the same. It's the same thing as what I described using the two oppositely charged charges. Like if we think of the water as being like the charges that are moving around the circuit, then the pressure that we've got in that circuit dictates how much energy we can get out per unit water, right? So each, if we've got a water circuit with water flowing around it, then the amount of energy we can get from say each litre of water if we were trying to get it to turn some turbine or something, you know, that's dictated by the pressure of the water. So pressure in a water circuit makes a really nice analogy for voltage in an electrical circuit. 